This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 26 of the Paper F2 Free Lecture Notes uh, and is on Financial Performance Measurement. Um, and to um, explain uh, exactly what we're talking about and the um, where we go about it, can you look straight to Example 1? Um, where I've given you a statement of financial position of a business uh, for each of two years, 31st December 2007, which are the first two columns, and 31st December 2006, which are the uh, second two columns. So we've got sort of this year and last year. And I've also given you the income statement or the statement uh, of profit or loss, again, for the two years. And you can see on the profit statement, that the uh, final profit after taxation this year, 2007, let's say, is 478, last year, 266. Well, the purpose of financial performance measurement is to look at various aspects to see if the company appears to be doing better or doing worse. Uh, and the main areas, as I mentioned on the previous page, are, which I'll obviously explain one by one as we go through, but profitability. Clearly, we want to know if the company is making more or less profit. Uh, liquidity, which is looking to see, uh, can the company pay its bills? Has it got enough cash? Uh, and gearing or risk, as I'll explain when we come to it. But let's look at them one by one. Uh, first of all, profitability. Um, simply to look at the final profit in itself is fairly meaningless. You know, this company has made more profit, but if the company's grown a lot, if the company's uh, raised a lot of money, and if the company's invested in a lot of new machines, you'll be expecting to make more profit. And so it's not much point in just saying, oh, it was 266 and now it's 478. Uh, more sensibly, we look in terms of ratios. Uh, and on the third page, you'll see all the ratios that you should be aware of. And let's work through them, check you happy what the figures mean. Um, and that you can make brief comments. A certain probability, first of all, most important of all, is the return on capital employed. Which, as you'll see, is effectively looking at the profits, but as related to the size of the business. If the business is twice as big, you'll expect twice the profit. Uh, it's defined as being, and I'll obviously explain why as we go through, the profit before interest and tax. as a percentage of um, the total long-term capital. I haven't put the percentage bit in, but this is a percent. Um, so before I talk more about the reasoning, let's have a look in each of the two years. In 2007, if you look at the uh, profit statement, Although the final profit was 478, that was after tax. So the profit before tax was 740, but that was after finance costs, which are another word for interest. And so the profit before interest and tax, or the profit from operations, is 790. And we express that as a percent of the total long term capital. And the total long-term money in the business is the share capital and reserves, which are 2190, plus the non-current liabilities, which are 500. It's all the long-term money in the company. If the company needs more money, they can either issue more shares or they can raise more long-term borrowing. But in total, the long-term finance is 2,690. Uh, and so in percentage terms, 790 divided by 2,690 
it's 29.4 percent whereas in 2006 um, the profit from operations is 462 the total long-term finance share capital 1401 uh, non-current liabilities 400 so in percentage terms 25.7%. Uh, now, without going on and on, a couple of things there. Uh, first of all, the reason um, we look at the profit before interest and tax uh, is certainly before tax because that's not measuring how well the company is being managed. You know, if the, com if the government changes the tax rates, fine, we pay more, we pay less, but that's not the fault of how we're managing the company. And also, we want to find the total profit that's being earned from the total long-term monies. So it's before interest. Uh, that's also called profit before operations, as you'll see, or the operating profit. So that's the profit that's measuring how well management are doing. Uh, the same thing, of course, is be able to comment only briefly. It's later exams where you could expect to write a lot more. But I, I, I think fairly obviously here, the long-term capital's gone up. They've raised more money. The profit's gone up as well. But more importantly, in percentage terms, the percent has increased. Uh, and I think sensibly, a company wants that percent to be as high as possible. How can a company increase its return on capital employed? There are two ways. You can either make more profit on everything you sell. If you make more profit on everything you sell, uh, then that's going to increase return on capital. Or alternatively, you can, what you might call, sell more efficiently. Uh, make more sales for the amount of capital involved. Let me show you what I mean with, first of all, the net profit margin. And although in financial accounts, net profit means the very final profit, here, for the same reasons as with return on capital employed, it means the operating profit, the profit before interest and tax. as a percent of the sales or the revenue, same thing. And so let's look at it, that is in both years. In 2007, the operating profit, the profit before interest and tax was 790. Uh, the total revenue, the total sales was 7180. And so, in percentage terms, it's what, 11%. In 2006, what was it? Uh, the profit was a lot less at 4.62. Uh, but, of course, the revenue, the sales were a lot less at 5.435. So, more importantly, in percentage terms... It was 8.5%. So what does that mean? It means everything they're selling, they're making more profit on. Maybe they've increased the selling price or maybe they've cut costs. But again, uh, surely that's a good sign. Uh, we want to be more profitable in that sense. But that's measuring how much profit, as a percent of sales, obviously, but the other thing is a bit less obvious. As you see on my list, it's the next one, the asset turnover. And the asset turnover is the revenue or the sales divided by the long-term finance, the long-term capital. It's saying as the company is bigger because they've raised more money, we expect there'll be more sales. 
but we look at the ratio. And usually this is just a number, not a percent. So check the figures before, again, I say more. In 2007, the revenue was 7,180. The total long-term capital we had earlier uh, from shareholders was 2,190. From long-term borrowings was 500 for non-current liabilities. And so 7,180 divided by 2,690 comes to 2.67. So our sales were 2.67 times what you might call the size of the company. What about 2006? Uh, revenue was smaller at 5435, but the company was smaller. The total long-term finance, equity, share was 1401, long-term borrowing 400. And so let's divide that through. I get 3.02. So last year the sales were three times the size of the company. This year, although the company's grown a lot, and the revenue's grown a lot, but it's now less than three times, which on its own isn't a good sign. Although ratios can often be dangerous. You know, although the company's grown a lot, and look at the non-current assets, they've a lot more machines and things. It could have been they were only bought towards the end of the year. And if that were the case, you wouldn't expect the revenue to have caught up yet, the sales. You know, there's always that danger. It may not be a fair comparison. However, I did say that in order to improve the overall profitability, the return on capital, it was either or both of increasing the asset turnover or increasing the profit margin. And do make sure you're aware and you remember that statement I've written, that the return on capital employed is equal to the asset turnover times the net profit margin. Uh, let's just check, although I appreciate there's a bit of rounding here, so it may not be precise. But you see in 2007, asset turnover was 2.67, and the net profit margin was 11%, which comes to 29.4%. And what was the return on capital employed? 29.4. Uh, in 2006. Asset turnover 3.02, net profit margin 8.5%, which comes to what? 25.7%, was it? Oh, 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 oh. Yes, it was. So, you know, overall it's increased, which is good. What you're aiming for is to increase either or both of those. Uh, finally, on profitability measures, um, although we know here that the net profit margin has increased, net profit margin is um, your sales less the cost of what you've sold, less all the other expenses. Well, let's try and get a bit of knowledge as to what is it that's happened. Have they cut the cost of the goods they're selling? Have they cut their expenses? Or have they increased the selling price? Uh, well, let's look at the gross profit margin. Uh, the gross profit margin, we take the gross profit as a percent of revenue. And so in 2007, the gross profit 17.95, the revenue 7.180, which is 25%. In 2006, 
the gross profit 1223, the revenue 5435. The gross profit was uh, 22.5% of the revenue. So uh, we can't make any firm conclusions here except that even um, if they have managed to cut their expenses proportionately, here they certainly have either increased the selling price or cut the cost of what they're selling, the cost of the goods, or obviously a combination of the two. Okay, well that's enough on profit measures. Uh, again, as usual, rather than uh, have the lecture get too long, uh, we'll have a break. In the next lecture, I'll go through the liquidity measures.